Let's see how you can create some eye-catchy animations in minutes. This machine already has some kinematic definition set up. I've already got some rigid groups created, and I've already got my motors established. If we hit the play button, we can see how we have a nice sequence of operation where the uh, gripper goes from one end of the machine to the other, picks up a part, and retracts back. Now, let's snazzy this up a bit. If we, look at, if we take a look at our timeline, I see I've got all my motor operations and events exactly where I need them. Let's add some uh, nice effects like fading, exploding, and some camera position control. I'm going to change a color option here to visibility color, so anything that I have in color will designate that it's going in and out of visibility. So some commands that we have to control that allow me to simply pick parts or sub-assemblies for complete visibility control. Notice how the color changed, letting me know that that part is going to have some visibility control. In the timeline, I can stretch that out to maybe the four second mark or wherever I think, and I can actually animate that live to see the visibility uh, take effect and watch that component uh, disappear. Maybe around the two second time uh, mark, I want something else to go out of visibility. So I'm going to pick this uh, conveyor subassembly. I'm going to pick the whole thing. Hit the apply button and now that is going to go out of visibility. I'm going to give it about a four second uh, delay as well so you can see it gradually go invisible as well. Then maybe around this part, I don't need the tabletop anymore so let's watch it go out of visibility. So I'm simply going to pick it and you know the drill will just increase the length to wherever I think I need. I can dynamically adjust all these on the fly to get the right visibility control to get the uh, nice, nice uh, animated uh, effects. Last but not least, maybe we'll hide this transport mechanism. I know it might be kind of weird hiding something that's actually being moved, but you get the idea on being able to move things around and control our visibility. All right, let's hit the play button and see what we've got. You can see the frame disappear, then the conveyor disappear, and then the tabletop, finally the uh, transport mechanism, all while the motors are animating the, uh, the machine as they normally would. All right, so that's animation uh, or, or visibility uh, control, let's talk about Animated Explode. It would be really nice if we could fly these parts apart and show them explode while all this is happening. So let's change our color option one more time to Explode Color, and I'm going to hide my timeline down here so we can see just the explode operations. Same as before, anytime anything explodes, it will show up in a different color. So maybe we'll have this uh, frame explode four ways, to the left, to the right, front, and back. So I'm going to pick these members here and I'm not going to be real, real picky about my pick, so I might be missing some parts here, but that's okay. Now that that's selected, I'm going to specify the orientation, and I want to drag it off to the left, to maybe about here, and notice how that goes into a specific color. Now let's grab the uh, frame members on the opposite side. We're just going to walk around our frame model here, picking all the little components that we have, the little feet and the end caps and so on and so forth, we're going to drag these off to the right. And notice how the time uh, bar isn't the exact length. That's because we're actually tracking mouse uh, time on travel. So if you want to go really slowly on a drag, or on, on explode, you just move your mouse very slowly and we'll remember that, or very fast, and we'll, uh, we'll try to manage that for you and notice how I moved that real fast and hence the time bar was very very short. I'm going to make all these the same length in just a minute here. And we'll move the back one out to the back of the model and that is probably going to be good enough. Now I'm going to move all of these to the near the uh, same ending time. So when I move my cursor over they explode and they hide at the same time. Now the uh, part is starting to go invisible for the uh, transport or the uh, conveyor, so maybe I want to explode it. So maybe around this point in time, in fact, maybe I'm going to move all these bars over. I think that will be a nice effect to have them start to fade and then explode. So if I move my cursor around, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Right about this point here, I want that uh, conveyor to, uh, to explode. So I'm not going to do all of it. I'm going to do a simple, uh, just some of the simple parts. I'm going to get these little feet, uh, these legs, and maybe some of the uh, these structural uh, members here, because I want things to explode a little bit differently here. 
So I'm going to move this over, and then maybe we'll explode it down. So two operations. And you'll see in my uh, time timeline, I've got two operations where it comes out, and then it disappears and it goes down. Now my, just my, my visibility is happening a little bit too fast, so let me grab these time bars down here, and I have a little bit better control over exactly when that's happening. All right, let's move everything back and uh, get just the right effect. There we go. Now maybe at this point in time, I want these rollers to, to kind of shoot out. So the other key thing here is notice that uh, these uh, effects that I'm adding, whether it's a visibility or explode, it happens at the point of cursor. So I can control exactly when things happen. So I'm gonna pick these rollers, all five or six of them. And I'm gonna change an option here to create an explode event per object. So it's gonna do them independently and I can control them all one by one. So if we look at my time bar, I can see all of them happen at the same time, but I'm gonna drag them out so you can see them shoot out like watermelon seeds if you were squeezing them. So now I can see my conveyor table moves and these rollers go out one by one as they disappear. All right, I think that's probably all I wanna do for explode, maybe one more. Maybe we'll do this tabletop. We'll have this explode out. Maybe I'll slide it out and then maybe we'll rotate it around. Let's do something crazy here. Maybe we'll drag it down. I'm not getting real, real accurate with my, my picks here. And then we'll, uh, we'll drag it straight down. And that's probably gonna be good enough. Now we play this thing. We can see, of course, if I fit it first. Now we can see how the, uh, the animation is running. Parts are exploding, parts are fading. Give me a very, very snazzy looking presentation that I can show off to my customers or prospects. All right, now let's turn our color off and uh, let's look at it a little bit different orientation here. And let's just play that animation one more time. All right, one thing it's missing is the camera walking around the model. Let's go ahead and establish that. So how the operation works is uh, what you do is you capture points in time of the camera position and the software will automatically handle the transitions between that. So let's uh, make our timeline really small and let's go into perspective mode. And that might be a bit too much. Let's dial that down just a little bit make it a little bit more realistic, like you're looking at your model. Now maybe at this point in time, I want to look at the model at this point of view. So there's a little button down here to capture that camera. Then a little bit into the uh, time, maybe I want to zoom in on this particular model right here. And I want to look at it at this point in time. Now maybe a few seconds later, I want to rotate the model around and look at the sort of the reverse angle of that uh, that gripper mechanism. And we'll pan it over to this location. I want to remember at this point in time. Then near the end of the model, maybe we'll zoom way back so you can see the entire operation and what, uh, what was just kind of accomplished. So we're going to remember that at that point in time. All right, I'm going to close my timeline down so you can see the magic happen all at the same time. So not only is the animation happening, but the camera is uh, panning around the model, why things are exploding, and uh, the visibility is happening. Now, if you grew up in the 80s like me, you probably want a little bit of a retro look, so I'm gonna change my background to black, and I'm going to change my rendering mode and show a little bit of a different effect here, and you can see just some of the different uh, display options that you have. At this point, I could crave a, create a an AVI of this and send that off to my customers, put it on YouTube or whatever you wanted to do. That's how you create a, a very, very impressive flashy animation in minutes.